here this morning. Everybody's just kind of sitting there patiently waiting. And it's good to be in the house of the Lord today, man. Why don't we open this service? Why don't we lift our hands to the Lord? Let's lift our voices together. Let's just take a moment and invite the presence of the Lord to be in his house today. I love you, Jesus. Lord, we praise you. God, we worship your name today. We exalt you, God. Hallelujah. 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 hands to the Lord in praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come into this house. Magnify the Lord. Lift up holy hands. Our hearts in one accord. He's worth Holy hand. 
He's worthy of our praise this morning. Amen. Why don't you turn to somebody near you and just kind of give them a, a wave or an air high five. Amen. Greet somebody with your eyes and smile at them this morning. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord today. Amen. Amen. And you can be seated this morning. Amen. Just by way of announcements. Amen. Tonight's uh, no class um, is a no go for tonight, uh, but it will be happening. We're just uh, we're working through the technology, and uh, and it will be broadcast in the next day or so. And there'll be questions available uh, for you to answer as well on the on the chat and in the group page. And so, uh, Pastor is out of town today, but is working on that. And so, look for look for that over the next day or so uh, to pop up on your on your Facebook account uh, as we air that session. And then for this week, it's our connect groups. And so uh, during this uh, pandemic, we've been, instead of having them in houses and homes, we've been having them here at the church. And so Wednesday evening this week is, uh, is Brandon's group, and they'll be meeting here at the church on Wednesday evening. And Thursday uh, will be our group. And uh, Dream will be leading that group this week here at the church. And that group is at 7.30. What time does your group meet? 7.30. 7.30. Well, 7.30 on Wednesday or 7.30 on Thursday. And then Friday will be the young people. And what time are you guys meeting on Friday? At 7. Okay. All right. And then Praise and Prayer is on Saturday at 7 p.m. here at the church for uh, the ministers that can and are Available 8 a.m. on Saturday is our says the Section 2 Ministers Conference and Prayer at Calvary Church. And so that's 8 a.m. on Saturday. Amen. And today, though, is another opportunity to worship the Lord together. Amen. In spirit and in truth. And we're so glad today to have each of you here this morning and those that are joining by way of our webcast. Uh, we welcome you today to First Church. And uh, we're asking Brother O'Neill to come this morning and just uh, lead us in our time of, of prayer together today. Praise the Lord. Good morning, everyone. Good to be here this morning. And uh, <coughs> bright sunny day, it's starting to look like summer. But um, this time of year, especially this week, coming up would be our camp meeting in, uh, in Dogwood Valley and all the churches across British Columbia. Some ministers from across the states would come and um, it would be a good time together. But due to the pandemic, we won't be having any camp meeting this year. It has been canceled. So we would like to turn our prayer focus this week on our leaders and our pastors. Amen. It has been a real... Um, Troubling time for them. They have to be making the decisions going forth with what is happening during this pandemic. Amen? So this week, July 19 to 24, our, our focus, prayer focus would be on our pastors and our leadership. And we are asking for prayers for their continued strength, guidance, for wisdom throughout this time. We're asking God to just continue to strengthen them so they can lead us, amen, and guide us throughout this time, amen. And uh, Ephesians 4, verse 10 to 12 says, He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave some, he gave some apostles and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Amen? We'd just like to bind together in prayer this morning. I don't know if Brother Jareem, could you take the liberty in praying for the pastors and leaders for their God's guidance, strengthening, and understanding through this uncertain time? Could you all stand and let's join in prayer this morning? Yes, Jesus. Oh, yes, Jesus. Oh, 
Yes, God. Yes, Lord. Oh, yes, Jesus. Oh, yes. Jesus. Jesus' name, amen. Could we give the Lord a hand, praise? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just like to bless the offering at this time. Lord Jesus, we're so thankful for the privilege to be here in your presence this morning, Lord. We ask you to bless this offering that we're about to give, Lord. Use it in your kingdom, O oh God. Spread your gospel across this world, Lord Jesus. We're so thankful for the opportunity to give. And we ask that your spirit be with us in this service today. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Those who have a tithe and offering, please come. And while you do, remember the social distancing rules. And uh, let's continue to worship with us today. Amen. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart.
Oh, yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Is anyone glad in the house today? Amen. I'm glad. Glad in my heart. Glad to be in his house. Glad to be alive. Amen. Glad to be breathing air. Amen. I'm glad to have the joy of the Lord. Amen. In my heart today. Amen. God has been so good to each and every one of us. You can be seated this morning. We're going to continue to worship. I invite you to sing along today. Amen. Shout joyfully to the Lord, all the earth. Come worshiping before the throne of God. For the Lord, He is good, and His love.
God is good, and you believe that his love and his mercy endures forever, you believe that his thoughts towards us are of good today, not of evil, you believe that his intention and his design is to give us an expected end, amen, God loves us today, God loves us today, amen, amen, I believe you're my
of the stories in the New Testament when Jesus was on this earth ministering. Many times you would just ask them simply, what, do you, what is it that you need? What do you need me to do? It didn't matter what the answer was. Jesus was everything that they needed. Amen. It didn't matter if they were sick. Jesus could touch them and heal their sickness. It didn't matter if they were deaf. He could unstop the deaf ears. It didn't matter if they were blind. Jesus sometimes would spit in the ground and he'd make clay or mud and he'd rub that in their eyes and he'd heal their eyesight. It didn't even matter if they were dead. Jesus would say, arise. And he would speak life back into their deadness. Amen. Jesus was everything that they could possibly need. You believe that he's that this morning? Amen. You believe that he's that today? Oh, I wish I had... Amen. A stronger response. You believe that Jesus Christ is all in all? That he can do exceeding abundantly above what we could ask or think? Amen. He's all we need today. We sing this last song in praise to him in acknowledgement of that today. Thank you, Jesus. He's all.
time, clap your hands to the Lord today. You believe that? Hallelujah, Jesus. Jesus, you're all we need today. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. And to worship him together today. Amen. As you may have already been able to tell, Pastor and Sister Dylan aren't here this morning. They're taking a few days off of rest, and so we amen, pray that they are doing just that this week. Amen. John chapter 8, if you'll turn there with me this morning. <clears throat> John chapter 8 in verse 30 is where we begin our text today. Amen. John chapter 8 in verse 30, it begins picking up kind of halfway through what was really going on in the full body of the text, but instead of reading all 29 verses, I, I thought we'd just pick up at verse 30. And so it says, as he spake these words, many believed on him. As he, that being Jesus, as Jesus spake these words, many believed on him. On him. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed on him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And, everybody say and. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, We are Abraham's descendants and have never been in bondage to anyone. How can you say then you will be made free? Verse 34, Jesus answered them, Most assuredly, I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. And a slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Therefore, we all know this one. This preaches all by itself in Pentecost. Therefore, if the Son, therefore, shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Amen. Somebody said amen. 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 If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. And this morning, I, I want to minister on this subject beyond belief, beyond belief. Will you pray with me this morning? Father, we are in your house together today and we have gathered, Lord, whether it be physically in this place or whether it be, uh, Lord, through the internet this morning, God, there are many that are gathered in your presence, Lord, and we have come and, and brought ourselves here, God, with intention to praise and worship and magnify your name today, for you are worthy, Lord, of that praise. And as we have done so, God, we have already begun to feel your, your spirit and your presence in this place. And I ask, Lord, God, that over the next few moments that your word would be made alive in us, Lord, that, God, you would help me to be able to speak with clarity of thought and let us that have ears this morning to hear, let us hear what it is the Spirit has to say to the church today, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen. You can be seated this morning. Amen. Beyond belief. <clears throat> you see, when Jesus walked the earth, and he, was, he was here for some 30 years, and there wasn't a lot of information given to us about him other than his his miraculous birth, of course. And, and then we see a little snapshot of when he was 12, but... Really, his ministry began at around about the age of 30. Now, there's lots to be said as to why that is, but for the sake of time and for the sake of this message this morning, I, I want you to understand that Jesus and his ministry, while there was a lot that happened, it happened in a really narrow space of time. 
It was about three or three and a half years of, of visible ministry. But while he walked the earth and he began his ministry, uh, you can see throughout the scripture that almost everywhere Jesus went, there was a crowd of people. There was, there was, here's a word we don't use a lot, but the Bible uses it a ton. It, it talks about a multitude of people, right? In fact, Luke 14 and 25, now great was the multitudes that went with him. Mark chapter 9, verse 14, now when he came to his disciples, he saw a great multitude gathered around about them. Mark 8 and 18, and when Jesus saw a great crowd around him, he gave a commandment to depart to the other side. Matthew 8 and 1, when Jesus came down from the mountain, large crowds followed him. Are you getting the hint this morning? Lots of people were following Jesus. Matthew 19 and 2, and large crowds followed him, and he healed them there. Matthew 20 and 2019, as they were leaving Jericho, a large crowd followed behind him. And again in Matthew 4 and Matthew 14 and Mark 3 and Mark 7 and Mark 10 and Luke 5 and Luke 9 and Luke 18 and Luke 23 and John 5. Are you getting the point this morning? Almost any page you land on in the Gospels, you'll see an example of where Jesus was. There were followers. Followers. Jesus had many followers. People went to great lengths to just get a glimpse of where Jesus was at. I'm reminded of the story of Zacchaeus. He, he was a little bit shorter in stature, and, and so just to get a glimpse, he climbs up a tree. Why? Because he wanted to see Jesus. And it was difficult to see him because he was a shorter person, and, and there was lots of people gathered. Around. I, what I'm needing you to understand this morning is there was no shortage of followers. No shortage of followers in his day. It, it would have been easy to have pictured Jesus then as some big and you know charismatic, larger than life personality that, that just by his presence and his, his very nature, he attracts people to him. But we don't really see evidence of that in the scripture. In fact, the prophet said there was no beauty that we should desire him. I don't know that he was, I don't know that he was necessarily the, the tall, dark, and handsome person I, that, that some people believe he might have been. I don't think there was anything about his demeanor or his personality, if you will, or, or his looks that attracted followers to him. I, I think there was something else going on. It was like... His reputation preceded him. He would go into towns and people would get wind that Jesus was in town and they'd drop everything they were doing and they would come and follow just to try and get a glimpse, just to try to be near this one that heals. Come on, you know what I'm talking about. I'm thinking of the blind man, right? He's, he's sitting by the wayside begging alms. He's sitting on the corner asking for people for their spare, their spare change. And he hears the commotion of a crowd. And he finally gets a hold of somebody. He said, what's going on? And they said, it's Jesus of Nazareth. And what does the blind man do? He, he can't physically see him. He probably, because of the crowd, could not make his way to him. But he was about to get his attention. So what did he do? He said, Jesus, have mercy on me. Amen. The people, shh, come on. Hide down. No, but he was, Jesus, have, have, have mercy on me. There was people all around. There was large groups of people, and they were trying to hush him up, but there was something inside of him that had to get the attention of Jesus, and he had to lift his voice to do so because of the crowd of followers that were with him. Most certainly, Amen. It was his reputation that preceded him. In fact, in one case, there, there was some guys that were so desperate to get their handicapped friend in front of him that they took their, their, their friend up on the roof and they peeled back the shingles. Now, if he lived in my strata, there would be some 
there'd be some noise made about that. We don't want people ripping up shingles and tiles, right? We don't just go around ripping up shingles and tiles. But when there's so many followers around Jesus and you're desperate enough, you'll do anything. Are you with me this morning? There's a lot of followers. And then there was a few in the crowd that understood. I, I've got to get to him. Whether I'm blind and I have to lift my voice, or whether i got to rip up the tiles and lower my friend down in front of him so he can be, amen, healed of his handicap, amen, and he could stand and roll up his bed and walk home with a miracle of not only physical healing but salvation. Come on, somebody. Amen. There was a desperation that was involved. I'm thinking about the woman who had the issue of blood for 12 years she tried many things of many physicians but when Jesus came to town she must have been in a very weak condition and there we know there was a many a crowd around him but that didn't stop her amen all the followers around Jesus did not stop this woman in her frail condition amen does she press through the crowd the Bible says and she determined in herself amen I'm gonna touch the hem of his garment and when she did virtue flowed from him can I pause and tell you this morning amen that he's still a healer today amen I know there's lots of noise I know there's other things going on around you but if you'll find your way to Jesus if you'll determine within yourself if I can just touch him amen you shall be healed so Jesus says, who touched me? And what did his disciples say? Are you crazy? Who, what do you mean who touched you? Look at all the people. Look at all the followers. I mean, if Jesus lived in social media day, he would have followers like you would not believe. The way in which people follow is maybe changed with social media. But Jesus still had followers. And they were with him everywhere he went. And when that one lady touched him, he's like, who touched me? And they, they, they said, well, you're crazy. What do you mean who touched you? Look at all the people. Look at all of the followers. There were so many followers that for someone to get to him, hey amen, you had to be desperate. You had to be determined. Determined. At some point, some people even made a scene. They even embarrassed themselves. Amen. Why? Because they wanted to get to Jesus. But while Jesus had many followers, this is what I need you to see. If you haven't paid attention to this point, I need you to get this point right now. While Jesus had many followers, not all of Jesus' followers were believers hmm. not all those that followed him believed him not all that followed him believed in him believed in his power or believed in his message Many of the followers were so convinced of their religion that they were trying to prove that he was a liar. They were trying to prove that he was some false prophet. I, I mean, he would, he would heal somebody on the Sabbath, and they, they'd be like, look, we caught him in the very act. They were religious zealots, and they were so caught up in their religion that they were not able to ever have a relationship with Jesus Christ. But guess what? They were in the crowd, weren't they? Come on, are you following this morning? They were followers, but they weren't believers. And the same is true in 2020 today. There's a lot of people that have awareness. There's a lot of people that follow Christ, but not everybody's a believer. Hmm. And in fact, Today, there's, there's people that follow Jesus from a distance, and they're satisfied with, with being able to see evidence of him. They're satisfied with having some type of connection to him. They're, they're satisfied with a belief and an understanding. I mean, maybe they went to Sunday school, and, and so when they're 
when they have kids, maybe they, they teach them a little prayer. Or maybe they still say grace around the table. And they bring children and they bring their families on Easter and Christmas. And, and maybe even say grace at Thanksgiving and talk about the blessings of God in their life. There's some people that have awareness. There's some people that even follow him. They're in the crowd somewhere. Amen. But they're content to be in the crowd. Amen. Not everybody that follows him is a believer. Some find their way to God, though, in times of need. There, there's people in the crowd that when all hell breaks loose in their life, then all of a sudden they get desperate, amen, and they, they find their way to him. And they'll pray, but only in times of crisis. And, and, and I need you to know today uh, that there are still many followers, uh, but not everybody that follows Christ uh, is a believer. Not every follower of Jesus believes in Jesus. And so we pick up our text in verse 30. And it says, as he spake these words, if we were to back up, we'd understand there's quite another large group of people. And the Bible says, as he spake these words, many believed on him. Not everybody, but many believed on Jesus. This is where the transition begins. You see, you can, there's a tipping point in which one chooses for themselves to move beyond being a follower to becoming a believer. You, you've got to then from follower to believer. We see evidence through the scripture that those that believed were those that moved closer in proximity to the Christ. You move closer. Nothing, in fact, uh, was going to stop some of them uh, from getting closer and touching him uh, or getting his attention. You see, when you're followers, you're content in the crowd. But when you're a believer, there's something that says, I got to move closer to Jesus. Uh, amen. You begin to trust him. You begin to believe in him. You begin to believe on him and on his word, the things that he's speaking. You're like, wait a minute. I believe that. I, I see that as truth today. Uh, amen. There's something about a believer that, that when you go from follower to believer, something changes on the inside and you're like, what he's speaking about, I believe. Being a believer makes you a better person. Why? Because of your proximity to Jesus Christ and your confidence in his word, your belief in his word. And there today are so many believers. And I thank the Lord this day for every man and every woman, every boy, every girl that has come to a place where they confess, I believe in Jesus Christ. I'm talking about people not just in this church, but there's people all over this city. Hey Amen. There's people in churches all around our community. And if you would stop them in the street or bump into them in the supermarket, what would they tell you? They'd tell you they believe, amen, in Jesus Christ. They're faithful to church. They read his word. At some point in their life, they move from just being a follower, just having awareness and curiosity, and they moved a bit closer, amen, and became believers. And churches today are full of, of believers, and I'm thankful today, amen, for those that have come to believe in, and men on Jesus Christ. Many are confident in their belief in Christ, and so confident, in fact, that they believe that their belief qualifies their salvation. And so people, I believe, I confess, amen, and therefore I'm saved. And I've had people even quote Acts chapter 16 and verse 31 where Paul and Silas are ministering to their jailer. And they said to the guard, amen, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved and your household. Is that not what the Bible says? Believe on the Lord. And you shall be saved. You see, there's something about moving from followers to believers that brings you closer. But this morning, 
friends of mine, hey, man, I've come to preach, to minister, to share with you, hey, man, what I really feel in my spirit and on my heart, and that is that there is something for you this morning. And that something is found, hey, man, beyond belief. Beyond belief. There's a lot of followers. There's a lot of believers. But there's something more than just being a believer. I believe. Amen. I believe there's something more for the man and for the woman that says, I'm not content to just be a follower. I'm not content even then to just be a believer. Amen. I am confident there's more. There's something. I feel something when I come. Amen. It's around me and, and people are tapping into it and I see their faith and their comp and I want more of what it is they have. I'll tell you where they found it. They found it somewhere beyond belief beyond just being a believer many people they, they arrive and become a believer and they're comfortable there but being a believer is more about a journey than it is a destination nobody becomes a believer and arrives it's just the starting gate Come on, somebody. Uh, hey, man. Uh, hey, man. I, I'm reminded, uh, hey, man, of the writer uh, who said that he was surrounded uh, by so great a cloud of witnesses. Uh, hey, man. And he runs the race. Uh, hey, man. And it's not about a destination. It's a journey that we're on. Hey Amen. And there's more to discover about Jesus. There's more to discover about his blessings for your life. If you're watching by way of Facebook this morning, I need you to know that wherever you're seated today, Jesus Christ has something more. He has something greater. He has something deeper. He has blessings you don't even know. Hey Amen. Are possible. There's things he wants to do in you and through you. Amen. But where you discover all of that is somewhere beyond just being a believer. Come on. Is there anybody in the house that would witness and testify? Amen. There's something beyond. I know that you were a follower. You were once a believer. But then what happened? You went a little further, didn't you? Becoming a believer is more about the journey than it is a destination. And we see that in our text in the very next verse, verse 31. Jesus said to those Jews that believe. Are they believers now? You with me? Followers in the crowd. Then he spoke to the believers. And he said to the Jews that believed. If, somebody say if. If you abide in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. All right, I got one amen there. Are you following? The followers became believers. Woo. Then Jesus spoke to the believers. He said, come a little closer. If you abide in my word, then you can be disciples. Come on, there's something different. There's something, I know some people are content in the crowd. I know some people are following Jesus from a distance. They're just part, they're just happy to be a part of all of what's going on. I, I recognize that. And then there's some people that say, I'm a believer. Hey, Amen. And I, I believe on what it is that the preacher's preaching. I believe on what it is I feel. But I came this morning to tell you there's something beyond belief for you today. Hey, Amen. There's a greater blessing. Hey, Amen. And Jesus said, how do you find it? Where do you find it? He said, if you abide in my word. If you abide in my word. Not all followers are believers. And can I go just another step further and say not all believers are disciples. Does that make sense today? The message I've really come to tell you is there's more for you. Beyond belief. Beyond belief. Jesus said abide 
What does that fancy word mean? It means stay right there. It means live in it. Sit with it. Amen. Abide in my word. Stay in my word. And you will become my disciple. Uh, uh, what's a disciple? It's more than a follower. It's more than a believer. A disciple uh, actively imitates both the life and the teaching of the master. It's a deliberate apprenticeship which is made the fully formed which has made the fully formed disciple a living copy of the master hmm. Jesus didn't plant this church here to attract followers Jesus didn't bring us here to just gather believers He sent us here he planted us here to make disciples. Followers, believers, disciples. Disciples imitate the life and the teaching of the master. At the end of it all, they just become a living copy of the master. <laughs> Jesus called 12 men, and when he called them, what did he say? follow me. Were they followers? They were followers. They didn't know who they was following. But somewhere along the line, they moved from followers to believers, did they not? And then we call those 12, what do we call them? The 12 hmm, disciples. You see, it's about a journey, not a destination. If becoming a believer was a destination, Almost this whole town would be believers. And we're literally in the Bible belt. There's a lot of believers. And I thank God for every one of them. But if you abide in my word, if you stay there a little longer, there's more beyond belief for you today. There's a discipleship, amen, that is available. Jesus, uh, the Bible says uh, in the beginning was the word, right? And the word was with God and the word was God. Verse 14, that word became flesh and dwelt among us. Uh, hey, I know I'm preaching to the choir this morning in some respects. And so I'll just cut to the end. The word is Jesus Christ, right? Hey, Amen. The word became flesh. And what did he do? Dwelt among us. Uh, and those 12 disciples and others that joined and gathered along the routes, uh, they became disciples of him as well. Uh, hey, Amen. And what happened is they abided. Uh, I did uh, with the word. Were they with Jesus? Did they follow him? Were they sitting around the fire? Were they fishing with him? Were they sent by him uh, to practice ministry uh, and to heal and to preach? Uh, amen. The gospel of the kingdom? Yes. They were with Jesus Christ. They were abiding with the word, if you will. Come on. And what happened? They went from following to becoming believers to becoming disciples where they had the same power and operated in the same way as Jesus did. And that was all intentional. So when he left the earth, uh, he left a good nucleus that could start the church uh, that we're standing in today, if you will. Are you with me today? There's something beyond belief. Uh, amen. I know we've got some believers watching. Uh, I know we've got some believers in the house. Uh, I thank God for you. Uh, but when I woke up yesterday morning, uh, amen, and turned to the scriptures, this is what I felt God, uh, amen, impress me to leave with you today uh, is don't be comfortable being on in the crowd. Uh, don't be comfortable just following. Uh, don't be comfortable just being a believer. Uh, amen. He's called you to be a disciple. Uh, he's called you to imitate him. Uh, amen. To believe in him. Uh, amen. To draw closer. Uh, to be a carbon copy to this world of who he is. Amen. All right. I'll settle down. Today, while Jesus may not be here in the flesh, he is still calling men and women to follow him. Yes or no? All right. 
Amen. And many followers have become believers. And to those believers, Jesus still offers a mentorship. And he said, he brought them a little closer in the text. And he, he said, if you abide in my word, amen, I've got news for you. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. But there came a time where he went to Calvary and died for your sins. Amen. And he was buried in a borrowed tomb, rose again on the third day, and he ascended in heaven uh, amen and left us with the good news gospel uh, that if we follow in his footsteps uh, amen we too can rise to walk in newness of life and be born again but guess what even though the word has ascended if you will even though Jesus Christ is not here in physical manner amen he left us with the word today and he said if you abide in my word you are my disciples abide in his word stay in his word live in his word Come on, somebody. Uh, amen. I'm talking to somebody that's been comfortable being a believer. Uh, amen. But the Holy Spirit wants you to know today uh, there's something for you beyond belief. Beyond belief. Let me give you just a couple quick examples this morning when we think about abiding in his word. You see, I, I quoted Acts chapter 16. In verse 31, where, where Paul and Silas witnessing to the jail guard, they, they said, if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be saved and your household. It's what the scripture says. But if you abide in his word, if you live in the word a little bit, if you steep yourself in scripture, you'll read just a little bit further and you'll come to an understanding that that, that wasn't just a statement and then they went on, but they continued to witness to him all through the night. And then in the morning, something different happened. In the morning, they went back to his house and they didn't just share with his family if you believe you're saved no the bible says the jailer and all his family not only did they believe but they were come on three of you know the bible this morning amen they were baptized in jesus name amen if you'll abide in his word there's something beyond just becoming a believer today amen there's something more for you beyond belief amen he impressed upon us by way of scripture that one must believe and be baptized Mark 16, verse 17 and 18, we know it. These signs shall follow them that, whoo, these signs follow them that believe. Laying hands on sick people and drinking deadly things and it not hurting you. Uh, amen. And all sorts of supernatural. Amen. All sorts of powerful things can happen through. Uh, amen. Those that believe. But if we take it at just that, we, we would think that all people that are believers have power. But I've come to tell you there's something more than just being a believer. Hey Amen. If we back up to verse 15, right before he says that, he says in verse 15, he that believes and, somebody say and. He that believes and is baptized. I've, amen. Verse 16. Uh, amen. He that is believes and is baptized shall be saved. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. There's more for you today. Uh, amen. Beyond belief. Jesus wants somebody to be baptized in the name of Jesus. If you've never been baptized in the name of Jesus, amen, then this message is for you today, amen, because I believe God has purpose for us. You say, what is it about getting wet that makes me closer to Jesus? To be honest with you, I don't really know other than it's what the Bible says to do. And Jesus was buried, amen, and he says we can follow him, and so we can be buried together with him, where? In baptism, amen. When there was water and nothing hindered them in scripture, they were baptized in the name of Jesus. I'm talking about something beyond belief. I'm talking about some power that you can tap into, amen, that is for everyone in this place. It's just a little bit further down the journey than saying I'm a believer. Does that make sense today? 
I hope so, because it's what the Spirit gave me for this service today. I really felt impressed to, to share with somebody. Maybe they're not even watching live. Maybe they'll watch the replay. But somebody under the sound of this voice and in this place and, and where the Spirit is reaching to today, he wants you to be baptized in Jesus' name. Beyond belief. Acts chapter 19, I, Misty, I may not have given you this one. Acts chapter 19. I may not have given it to you because I forgot to write it down. Acts chapter 19, the Bible says in verse 1, And it happened while Apollos was at Corinth that Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus and finding some or certain disciples. He found disciples. What's a disciple? Somebody that's moved beyond belief, right? And so what does he ask them? Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you... Come on, I need you to get this this morning. Uh, amen. He, he, he'd seen some disciples, and he, he said he knows that they're believers because they're disciples. He's done the math, and he said, what about when you first believed? When you first believed, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you first believed? And they said to him, we've not so much as heard whether there be a Holy Spirit. And he said to them, well, into what then were you baptized? And they said, well, in the John's baptism. And Paul said, John indeed baptized, but he baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him who would come after. See, I need you to get this. There are people in our society that have done everything they know to do. They heard a gospel and they repented, if you will. They, they have come to a place where they have been baptized into John's baptism. In other words, they've done everything they've heard and known to do. They're believers. They're bought in. But nobody told them about what's beyond belief. <laughs> See, they were baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him who should come after him. Uh, amen. John, what was his job? His job was a forerunner. Uh, amen. He was saying, listen, there's one coming uh, whose shoes I'm not even worthy to unbuckle. Uh, amen. There's another one coming. Uh, the problem was somewhere along the line they took a wrong turn uh, and missed the whole Jesus train coming through town. Uh, amen. And he found them out in the area somewhere later on. Uh, and Paul said, I see your disciples. Uh, I see your believers. Believers, have you received the Holy Ghost? They've, we've not even heard of this. How are you baptized? We're baptized in the only way that we've ever heard to be baptized. <laughs> well, let's read on. What happened? Paul being Paul, you know, he wasn't content with just saying, well, let's shake hands and be believers together. Uh, amen. He was uh, convicted. Uh, amen. Something had happened uh, in his journey from Saul to Paul where he recognized there's something more. Uh, amen. In store. Uh, and he goes on uh, and says, when they heard this, uh, hey, in verse 4, Paul said, Amen. John indeed baptized the baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him who would come after him. That is on Christ Jesus. And when they heard this, they were baptized. They'd already been baptized, but they were baptized again. How? In the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke with tongues, and and prophesied. Amen. Here this morning, I've come just simply with a message. I know that you're a believer. I know that you love Jesus with all of your heart. I know that you wouldn't be in this building and wouldn't take time to watch if you didn't love Jesus. Amen. And I'm thankful for your experience to this point. 
But I want you to know there's something for you beyond belief. I don't know why I keep looking at the camera. Amen. But I want you to know whoever's watching today, there's something beyond belief for you. I know you've been a believer for some time. I know you were baptized when you were younger. But there's another baptism for you. Amen. And it's a baptism in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission or the forgiveness of your sins. And then beyond belief, there's another blessing. Uh, Amen. And that's the gift of the Holy Ghost in your life. Uh, The Holy Spirit infilling in your life. Uh, It's nothing to be scared about. Uh, It's everything to rejoice about. Uh, Amen. Because it's a blessing beyond beyond belief this morning. Uh, Amen. There are some that follow. uh, Then there are some that believe. uh, And then there are some that are disciples. uh, Amen. And there's something for you today beyond belief. When believers, believers abide, In the word, they discover that there's a wonderful world of baptism. When believers abide in the word, they recognize this is not just what's in our creed. It's not just what we preach in this church. Amen. Read it for yourself in the scripture. Amen. Grab your favorite cup of coffee and read through the book of Acts. Amen. Take an extra long peek at Acts chapter 2. Don't take my word for it. I want you to know there's something for you beyond just being a believer. Amen. There's a power that he wants to instill into your life. There's an anointing that he wants to place upon you. There's a work that he wants to do through you. Amen. And you say, how, preacher? Amen. How does this How I'll tell you how it happens. Amen. It happens when you are willing to move beyond belief and abide in his word. Abide in his word. Would you stand this morning? See. Many believers have chosen to abide in the word. And they've discovered the, they've discovered the freedom. Amen, that comes into the life of those that have been baptized in Jesus' name. And they discover the liberty that they feel when they allow the Spirit to move through them. There's many perhaps watching or here today that understand that there's a power and there's an authority that comes Amen, inside of you and works in you. Wants to work through you as you abide in the word and become a disciple. He wants you then to make other disciples. And you'll fill your mouth with the word. He'll put a power in your lip. Amen, the things that you speak will be powerful into people's lives. Why? It's not your spirit. It's not your righteousness or goodness or good looks. It's... It's the power of the Spirit. Where do you find it? Beyond belief. And then verse 32 says, and this is still the text. We haven't even got through the text yet. The text says in verse 32, and, verse 31, and if you abide in the Word, verse 32, and, this is like an extra blessing, and you shall know the truth. You abide in the word long enough, you'll know the truth of God's word. Come on. And you shall know the truth. (laughs) And the truth shall make you free. The answer, we've never been in bondage. And he said, yes, you have. Because every time you sin, you're in spiritual slavery. You become a slave to that sin. There's things in your life that have held you back and held you down for long enough. If you'll abide in His Word, I know you're a believer and you love Him, but if you'll abide in His Word long enough, 
He wants you to know that you'll know truth. And the truth of God's word is powerful enough to break every chain. Amen. To break every addiction. To break every sin that has kept you bound for so You've been a slave to this sin for so long. You might not even recognize it anymore. I want you to know if you're a believer today in anything that Jesus is about, if you'll move beyond belief and abide in his word, there's a truth that will come and make you free. And then he goes on. We could spend it. We could spend a whole nother message on the next verse. Slave doesn't abide in the house forever, but a son abides. And then he goes on to say, and if the son, capital S, speaking of Jesus, amen. See, that's a whole nother powerful message right there. Amen. A slave doesn't stay in the house, but a son does. And if the son, if the son makes you free, you're free. What are you talking about, preacher? I'm talking about what's for you today beyond belief. Come on, I'm talking about something that'll liberate your spirit. I'm talking that something that'll break every chain. I'm talking about a healing. I'm talking about a blessing. I'm talking about a power and an authority that comes in you and upon you and through you. Where do you find it? You find it beyond belief. Being a believer is not good enough anymore, folks. Just coming to church isn't good enough. Amen. I, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but just believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, amen, isn't going to get you where you want to go. Amen. Somebody needs to be baptized. Hey, somebody needs to be filled with the Spirit today. Amen. Come on, would you lift your hands right now? Amen. If you're watching by way of webcast right now where you are, come on, would you lift your hands and let the Holy Spirit move in your room right now? Amen. In Jesus' name name. I pray, Lord, that you would move right now. The power of your spirit would minister across this building. Even right now, there's something that you have for the believer today. There's a power. There's an authority. God, I believe there's somebody hungry for more. And I ask, Lord, that you would bring revelation. Let the scales, Lord, of society fall away and let them see, Lord, for themselves what it is your word has to say for us today. And these signs shall follow them that believe. I know this is different. We're all sequestered this morning in little bubbles. Hey, man, I got good news for you. If you need a healing in your body, you don't need the preacher to lay his hands on you this morning. If you need encouragement, you don't need the pastor. He's not even here this morning. You don't need him, amen, to pray with you today. I would encourage you, if you're a believer today, amen, if you've got the Holy Ghost this morning, amen, somewhere on your row, would you take a hand of somebody nearby or put your arm around their shoulder? Come on, there's families together. Amen. There's, there's guests that are with each other this morning. Come on, right in your bubble, would you let the power of the Holy Holy Ghost move through you. Come on. These signs shall follow them that believe. Amen. You can pray and agree with your spouse, with your children. Amen. If you're watching this morning, wherever you are, put your hand. Amen. On somebody nearby you. Amen. I believe this morning that there's something. Amen. That wants to happen in this place. There's a spirit of God that wants to move in somebody's life. Amen. And you don't need a preacher to pray for you right now in the name of Jesus. That's it. Amen. Pray. Agree. Amen. With somebody else. Let the Holy Ghost work through you today. Amen. As we worship the Lord, I encourage you, don't be satisfied being just a believer. Don't be satisfied with just what you're feeling on the outside. Amen. Let the Holy Spirit have his way in your life today. Come on. I, I wish there'd be a believer right now that said, I want something more. I want to go beyond belief. I'm 
thankful for everything that I have to this point. But Lord, I want something more. Amen. It's for you this morning. It's for you this morning. If you ask it in the name of Jesus, amen, you will have it today. Amen. And when we two or three agree, it's touching anything. It shall be. It shall be. It shall be. be. There's nothing too hard for our God. Amen. What you need, what you want this morning is just beyond where you stand. If you're a believer, take one more step. Amen. Beyond belief and let the Holy Ghost work through you. Awesome in power, our God, our God. Our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God. morning I know I know this is different but we're doing what we can with what we've got right now I want you everybody in this place if you just turn right around I know that's that sounds crazy but from the front to the back I want you to reach forward and pray for the people behind you amen let the distance just be closed by the uplifting of hands and then I want us to just, we're in proximity to those cameras in the back. Uh, there's somebody that's listening and watching that needs this message today. Uh, amen. Just by faith. Uh, amen. Just by proximity. See, we're, we're, we're moving from followers to believers to disciples. Uh, and there's somebody that needs your prayer this morning. Uh, amen. And so we're reaching from the front to the back and we're praying for the person now in front of us. Uh, amen. Right now, would you pray for them? Uh, would you pray for that person on the other side of the camera? Amen. Right now, I pray, uh, amen, Lord, that you would continue to flow, uh, continue to move, Lord. Uh, We pray in the name of Jesus, uh, Lord, that it would be so. uh, Even today, let somebody have revelation uh, of the gospel. Let somebody see their need, uh, Lord, to be baptized in Jesus' name. Uh, Let somebody, even right now with hands lifted, uh, receive the gift of the Holy Ghost today. uh, Amen. In Jesus' name name. Receive the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. That's it. Come on, pray for somebody today. Lord, we believe, God, for healing this morning. We believe, Lord, that cancer and tumors and sickness to be dissolved in the name of Jesus. We believe there's nothing too hard for our God. And we step beyond just the comfort of belief. And we exercise our power and exercise our authority upon the word of God and by the power of the name of Jesus receive what it is you desire today receive what it is you want from the Lord move beyond belief and receive it today we thank you for it in Jesus name in Jesus name if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our 
today. Help us to see truth. Help us, Lord, to have revelation of truth this morning. And God, when we discover the truth of who you are, Lord, I pray that you'd make us free. Lord, and let us be free indeed. Help us, Lord, to stop being content by living, Lord, in comfortable circumstances. Help us, Lord, to move with God. Amen. Beyond belief today. Let us be uncomfortable in our comfort. And let us press, Lord. Let us push, oh God. Let us reach, Lord, beyond belief and receive what it is you have for us today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And the best way for you to discover, amen, all of the truth of what God has for you today is to really do it one-on-one with somebody that is a believer, that somebody that is a disciple. And the best way I know is through, through Bible study. Because we don't normally make pitches for these things, but this morning I, I just want somebody to know that we would love to just share God's Word, read the Word together, share what we've learned with somebody and allow to, you know, uh, to create a space where God can move in your life and in your heart. And if you feel more comfortable doing that we, uh, through a Zoom or something, we can. We got all the technology now. We can do it in your living room. Or we can do it 100 miles away. But we wanted to teach you the Word of God this morning. And so these, these Bible studies, they're open. They're free. They're, there's lots of people here that would love to teach somebody, amen, and share with somebody the Word of God. And I want you to know, if Jesus said, if you'll abide in my Word, you can become my disciple. And with discipleship, there's an authority, there's a power, there's a blessing. Amen. You want to know why some of us smile so much and have joy? Amen. Even though we got circumstances that are unfavorable in our lives, I'll tell you how. We abide in the Word of God, and we know our joy comes from somewhere beyond circumstance. Amen. And so there's, there's lots to share. I want you to know whether you're here or watching this morning, we wanted to share the Word of God with you. Amen. And the first thing that you can do, it's an easy step, is just say, I, I would just love, I would just love to hear more about the Word. And so if you're watching, you can message us just in Facebook Messenger to this group that you're watching. Amen. And we'll get in contact with you. Amen. We'll share the Word of God with you. We'll help you abide in the Word and help you move beyond just becoming a believer in Jesus' name. Father, we're so grateful today for your spirit, for your presence that we feel here today. God, I'm so grateful, Lord, for this, 
the many believers, God, that we have that are here joining us this morning, God, in this service today. And God, we're so grateful for the progress that we have made in our walk with you. We're so grateful for each leg of the journey that we, God, have arrived and moved through. But God, for everybody, for everybody under the sound of my voice, God, you have more for them today. There is more for each and every one of us on this journey as we walk with you. And I pray that you would go with us beyond belief, Lord, and help us to abide in your word. Lord, help us to stay with you, Jesus, and discover all the blessings that you have for your people, we pray. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. You're dismissed this morning. Wave at somebody as you're exiting. Amen. And we'll see you on Thursday for home groups.